And Sonali, I will pass it over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Julie. And I'm so excited to be here. As Julie mentioned, this is such an important topic and it's something that I, you know, it's very just close to me or dear to me. I was just, we were getting started. I was sharing with Julie. You shouldn't have, you know, like you don't have favorite children, so you shouldn't have favorite programs, but this would be what I would say is one of my favorites uh, that I like doing much, but also because it's just something that is so important and something that we typically may not think about in ourselves or if, if in terms of ourselves. So, um, so with that, I'm going to move us along um, and get, get us started. A very quick introduction of myself. My name is Sonali Goyal. Uh, right now, I am the Director of Talent and Development at Millen. I completed, I just completed two years uh, with that company. Uh, it's also the first time I worked for a publishing sort of like just creative company. Before that, my entire experience was with technology Silicon Valley um, company. So this is a change in, in culture. Um, as well as industry, but you know, again, it's so, it's so much of what we do um, is about people, and people I feel are the same uh, across in terms of you know what they want from their careers, what how they want their careers to grow. Um, I will also share with you what I call my tagline, my introduction, if you will, and that's kind of sort of set the stage of what we would like to end up with um, as we do this this workshop on on personal branding. So I introduce myself as a strategic partner. Uh, with, in, in, that I work with business leaders to define, articulate, and sustain, which is very important to me, um, a high-performing, inclusive culture where people are excited to learn and do their best work. So it is about empowering others, but also empowering myself through empowering others. Uh, but you know, calling out the high-performing, the inclusive piece, these are two, two aspects that I'm really um, uh, passionate about, if you will, in what I do. And so, not that we have to walk away with our um, introduction statement, but that's what we'll be working towards um, this, this workshop. I will say that your personal branding exercise is not something that we can do just in an hour. But what I hope to do today is to set some of the, um, you know, share some of the principles of what you need to think about, what you need to keep in mind as you begin identifying and defining what your brand is. Um, so with that, um, I know that all of you are probably Zoom veterans by now, but in case you needed a reminder, um, we will interact. So this way you can set up a speaker view, which means that you can either, um, you know, you can change your view. So with the speaker view, you can only see me, but with, if you select the gallery view, you can see everybody who's on, on camera. Um, with the small groups, I would say in this case, let's not mute. You know, it's a small, intimate group, so we can stay off of mute. Uh, but typically, just to avoid background noise, you may want to uh, put yourselves on mute, depending on what you have happening in the background. Uh, there are going to be ways for you. To, I'm going to ask for input. Uh, you can, sh depending on what you're comfortable with, choose uh, reactions, use chat, or just go off of mute um, and, and, you know, say, um, say what you have, ask a question. I don't mind being interrupted. I think some of the more learning happens or the interesting conversations happen when I sort of step off script, if you will. So don't hesitate at all to raise your hand, interrupt me and ask a question. And I think we'll have some time at the end also in case, um, you know, there were some other um, questions you wanted to ask. So with that, let's talk about what we're going to cover today. We're talking about a brand. Now, some of you, this might seem redundant. Uh, so I'll skip over that quickly if you would like. Uh, but the, the important thing is, you know, taking that sort of making that segue from what a brand is, like the impersonal or the product brand that we may be talking about, and what it means to have a personal brand and what it means to our careers. Um, and once we've established the importance of our career, uh, personal brand um, and the link between that and our career, we'll actually talk about the steps that you will take or you can take to develop that brand. And then finally, some action items as takeaways so that you can continue working on it. Like I said, an hour is just not enough because so, so much of it is also just discovering ourselves. And so that's why I say that, you know, this is just the beginning of the journey, if you will. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thank you. All right. So here's what I ask you for your input. Again, you can use chat. You can just go off of mute. What is a brand? How would you define a brand? And I'm not asking personal brand or company brand, but just brand in general. Mm 
Again, you can use chat or you could just go off of mute. But when I say brand, what does that mean? What does that bring to your mind? All right, I'll help you out. I have some definitions. Again, when you, when you go searching for definitions, you'll find a lot of them. So I'm not going to read through them for you, but I'll put them on screen so you can look at the various definitions, um, you know, how, how subject matter experts, marketing gurus, and so on have defined what a brand is. What I essentially say is that it's the emotional reaction that you get when, when that brand is mentioned. Um, you know, so it's, it's the emotional connection that you would have. Uh, that's what makes it a little intangible. Um, it, but, the, but that emotional reaction is based on expectations, your prior experiences, stories that you may have heard, um, and our own interpretations. But it really is that emotional reaction. What it isn't is essentially, it's not just a logo. The logo carries meaning because of the meaning that we give it. Similarly, it's not a product. It's not just one product. It's not just one tagline. It's not just a website. However, just these are good um, attributes or um, additions to your brand, but they by themselves don't define the brand. Does that resonate with, with all of us? Julie, no, I think, sorry, Julie. No, that's okay, Sonali. I think it's so interesting because we all experience brands and we all know what brands are. And I think some of the reason why, why people don't jump to, you know, defining what that definition is, is because of the intangible, because it's a brands are a feeling. So it can sometimes be really hard to define what a brand is because of what a brand is. So I find that that really interesting. Absolutely. And you're so right. It is because it's so intangible and it's based on feelings. Um, but you also know when I, if I put a brand name up, you would have some sort of an identification if it's a well-known brand. And we'll actually do a sort of a, an exercise along those lines later on as well. So uh, let's talk about types of brands, right? So one, you know, corporate brands, the big giants that we're all familiar with, like Unilever. Um, there are product brands, like something that sits under Unilever, like Dove is part of Unilever. Again, Unilever has its own reaction, so to speak. Dove has its own reaction, so to speak. And what we're really going to talk about are personal brands, like what, what that um, does for us. But here's something that brands, strong brands, and by when I say strong brands, is that that identification. So if I put Unilever up there, or if I put um, Dove up there, it's what these strong brands have in common. And the reason I'm going to share or you know talk about this, and again, I know some of you, a lot of you may come from a, back, you know, a background in marketing, in branding, so this might be a little redundant. Um, but you know that strong brands don't happen by chance; they're thoughtfully developed. So that means there's intention behind it, that, you know, it is about what you want to, what did that brand to represent? And then you structure the brand around that. They do become recognizable. Like, you know, you, you can identify. So if I pull a name up, like even if I say Coca-Cola, there is recognition. They're consistent. That means that they've, that story that they've told that, you know, the, 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 the emotional connection that they've made with people tends to be consistent over time or their messaging tends to be consistent over time. Um, while, while still being dynamic, which means that they're, while they're not changing their ethos, if you will, they are responding to the times and to the audiences that they are catering for and how that audience is changing. So while Dove may not necessarily, you know, move away from being nice and soft on your skin, how it messages that and the audience it touches, you know, they, they modify their messaging um, and their content to meet that audience, but they're not essentially changing their identity. With me so far? Right. And the last one is the one that's key, that it's authentic, that I'm not making up a story that doesn't hold up. Um, and we'll talk a little bit further along on what happens when your story that you've built your brand around doesn't hold up. But that's the thing that, you know, most people when they, you know, for example, sticking with the example of Dove, you want them to, uh, you would say that it does, Overall, maybe, you know, maybe not the most um, the skincare solution that you're looking for, but it overall may be better than other soaps or, you know, tends to leave your skin softer, um, but they're authentic to that message. So that's kind of where we want to go. Now, the same concepts that would apply to your product brand, brands, right, or your um, corporate brands 
apply when you're talking about your personal brands. We have to be intentional about what we want that brand to be. Uh, we have to be recognizable. Now, depending on whether you want world recognition or just recognition within your industry or your you know, company, uh, you, know, you can define what that rec recognition scale needs to be. And then you have to perform in accordance consistently while keeping your audience in mind. And then how you show up and how you interact has to be consistent with the brand that you're building for yourself. Agree with me so far? Any questions? Comments? Okay. Remember again, drop in a question or a chat in chat anytime. Um, I can see it pop up, uh, or I thought I could. Hold on one minute. Oh, there is one chat. Sandra, thank you. I'm sorry I missed it earlier, but when I, but the, you did respond to what is a brand is a recognized name that stands for something. And I think actually that's a very succinct way of saying it. And I'm sorry I missed that earlier. Okay. So with that, let's move forward and let's talk about what is a personal brand. So I've been sort of building up to it. So before I do the big reveal of what your personal brand is, any thoughts, guesses um, on what you think the personal brand, your personal brand is? How you want to be perceived, absolutely. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, your personal mission statement, absolutely, Jennifer. That's such a um, nice way to say it. And we'll actually talk a little bit about it. Tamara, your statement of your values and what you offer, absolutely. And what makes you unique. So yes, it's actually, it's all of these things. It's not just one of these, it's all of these things, right? Your brand, your brand is about your personal values, your unique offering, your personal mission statement, what you do, and, a little, and about how you want to be perceived. So with that, let's talk about one, like, you know, how you want to be perceived, how you market, how you promote and market yourself. So whom do you reach out to? Whom do you connect? And what messaging um, do you give them, whether it's verbal, nonverbal, or just by impressions. Uh, your unique combination of skills, expertise, experience, and your own personality. It is the telling of your story. Now, remember we said, you know, earlier on, we were talking about brands that intention and the story behind the brand that helps make the emotional connection. We as humans are natural, are drawn to stories. We like stories. Um, and so if you're able to tell your story as part of your brand that, that builds a nice, um, human connection, if you will, to people um, that they can recognize and connect with. And, and also it's your behavior, it's your spoken and unspoken words, it's your attitudes and your presence. When I say uh, presence, it's how you show up um, in different scenarios, in different settings, with different audiences. So it's all of all of that. So yes, you all got it, got it right. It is how you promote yourself. It's your unique combination of skills, experience, expertise. It's your own story that you tell. And it's also how you present yourself and how you act or what you say, all of those combined together to make a brand. This can seem daunting, right? It's intimidating. It's like, how do you check on so many factors? Like there are like four things and they're not small things, which is one reason why we're saying this one hour is more of getting us started on the journey, because like some of, in many ways, this is a journey of self-discovery as well. Uh, but, it, but I'm also going to break it down so it doesn't seem like, oh my God, there's just so much and I'm not going to do any of it. Because, um, you know, whether we want it or not, we have a brand already. Now, we can be intentional about it. That means we, we're creating the brand we want, or we can let people create the brand for us that they want. And so really, this is about taking things into our hands and shaping that narrative for ourselves. So what I'm going to do now is to bring up a couple of famous people. And I'm going to ask you what your reaction is when you see them, right? What like the, the, the emotional connection we were talking about earlier? Tell me when these when I bring them up, what what comes to your mind? One or two words or statements, if you want, but really what your reaction is. So let's start with Oprah. Uh, what does Oprah bring to your mind? 
truth seeker, connector, powerful woman, inspiration. Absolutely, great. All right, let's bring our next person in. Powerful yet warm, I love that, Tamara. Definitely an influencer. Um, all right, let's think about Tiger Woods. What comes to mind? Focused, yeah, absolutely. Hard worker, yeah, he, you know, so, you know, feel like sports, you don't get there by chance. You have to work really hard. So it's talent combined with hard work, dedication, breaking barriers, absolutely. It couldn't have been easy to reach where he is um, and what he might have faced on his way to, to get to that pinnacle that he uh, reached. Anything else? Okay. Let's talk about the couple of the moment, I guess. Uh, especially now that we were talking about Oprah, this was just like, I have to put them in. So tell me about what you think about um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And, and here's another question. Are they independent brands or are they a brand together? Completely authentic, controversial, non-conformist. Yeah. Great. And then my last, uh, well, last but one, Lori Loughlin. Yikes. <laughs> Julia <I> love that. <laughs> Cheat, wow, yes, cheater, scandal. Um, and think, and, you know, so think about before the um, college admission scandal, what did you think about Lori? Or, you know, if you can put that aside for a bit, did you have other thoughts that might, um, about Lori Laughlin? So that's how she made the news or it sort of got into people's radar is, um, all right, so innocent, warm, Aunt Becky. Yeah, so her sort of influence was limited outside of the show. So if you weren't in, you know, watching the show, if you weren't following it, you probably didn't know it was. Um, all right, another one. Amanda Gorman. Spunky, yep, inspiration, inspirational, absolutely powerful. Can you imagine the amount of courage it would have taken her to step up there and to recite her poem? And, and even afterwards, for all that spotlight, that media spotlight, the attention um, and how she was so graceful in, in all of that uh, and, and, and continues to be, right? So now, again, think about what we just did here. We, unless you know any of these personally, and of course you may, uh, we already have thoughts about them, right? So we're also ascribing our own impressions of them, even though we may know nothing or very little about these um, these individuals. And so I want to keep want you to keep that in mind um, as we sort of explore this um, this piece. Now, again, another question before we move on from here: um, For any of these people, well, Lori was one example, but have um, have any of them changed over time, or how have they changed? So Laurie went from being the sort of warm, loving Aunt Becky type person to, you know, somebody who was cheating and sort of leveraging their privilege for, um, for their own benefit. What about, say, Oprah or Tiger Woods? I think for Oprah, it went from, you know, breaking the glass ceiling to creating her own her own level, right? She, she yeah. just, she goes beyond what that glass ceiling was. And so, you know, for her to have her first show was like a huge accomplishment and yeah. to now be in like a completely different playing field. She's just leveled up so much over the course of her career. Yeah. And you think about the stories that she shares from her earlier life where, you know, there was just literally no belief in her having any sort of potential. Her name was something that would hold her back. Um, and then to now where, like you like Julie, you were saying, this is just a completely different level. It's like, nobody's been at that level before, sort of a thing. Woods is also, you know, Tiger Woods has gone and has his ups and downs and sort of, you know, even from, from his sports career perspective, but also from his personal life. And then again, not all of these brands um, are positive. 
I know for the most part, you know, they trend, you know, the example I shared through uh, uh, trend towards positive. But keep in mind that if you're also, depends on also where you're viewing these from. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit as well. But um, it's also our own perceptions that color how we perceive and view these brands. And that's something that we have to absolutely have to be aware of as we, um, you know, think about crafting what our brand looks like as well. So, um, you know, very quickly, I know that you're all in here because you think it matters. So I'm not going to belabor the point, um, but why did they matter? Like I said, you know, you're per you already have a brand, whether you believe you know what it is or not. Uh, I find Bezos um, uh, comment the most sort of instructive, if you will. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. It's sort of, it's something that, you know, can give you anxiety when you think about it. But it's also what happens, um, you know, in terms of what stories you you, you let people really, um, say about you when you walk uh, when you're not in the room. Um, and like I said, if you're not branding yourself, everybody, somebody else is for sure. Are we good so far? Am I going too fast, too slow? Just right. Perfect. Perfect. Great. All right. So another exercise now, and I remember I said, uh, we talked about um, how our own perceptions um, define also how we see and view people and the brand we are, may ascribe to them. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give, show you three pictures. And then I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions about each of these, right? So first I'm gonna just look at the pictures as they come up and tell me what you, what comes to your mind again, when you see these pictures. Now, these are not people you recognize, these are just, you know, general people that you would encounter in your uh, today. And you don't have to, so don't, you don't have to tell me what you think about them, but just feel, think as I bring the pictures up, just no, make a note of what your initial impression is of uh, each of these individuals. Okay. All right. So here are the, here are the questions. And you can reply in chat or just again, go off of mute, but which person would you trust to fill in for you at work? Number one, number two, or number three? Three, okay. Three. Two. Sandra, you're not sure, okay. All right, next question. Which person would you prefer to hang out with after work? Three. All right, Julie, anyone, all right. Um, one, maybe, Jennifer again, any of them? Absolutely, okay. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, another question. Which person would you want to do your finances? Two, two. Most serious, is that okay? So that you, Elizabeth, you'd pick two because that person looks the most serious. Two or three. Okay. I mean, they're all terrible ways to pick a human being to complete a task, just to be clear. <laughs> and that, that's part of the point here, right? So that's why I put them in there. <laughs> um, and then last question, which person would you trust to watch your children or pet? No one, none of these, okay. So the point I'm making with all of this, and I know, I know that you got that, is um, that first impressions matter, right? So we don't really know anything about any of these individuals except in what we, um, what we see. And then I've been forcing you to make a choice. Um, and then, you know, so Juliet is here based on stance alone, not one. So again, you know, it's how, again, how a person presents themselves. Uh, it's how, and, and, and for the position, uh, again, you know, two might work out really well for somebody who needs somebody who gives that sense of solidity, solidity, if you will, 
and seriousness if you're working with finance. But Julie, as you mentioned in your comment, you know, finances can be intimidating. So you'd want somebody who is more approachable, uh, somebody that you would, you know. So again, all of these are our perceptions. Um, and so it, while it might seem unfair, people's perceptions um, or biases, if you will, do have an impact or should be considered in what you, uh, when you're crafting your personal brand, right? So one of it is to say, well, this is my brand and I want it to be uh, what I, you know, this is what I want to be, but you have to keep in mind as, as you would if you were marketing a, a product is the audience that this brand is going to be perceiving and receiving and how they would perceive you um, or your brand. And so you want to you want know that first impressions matter and you want to be very thoughtful of what you con uh, convey and that bias, conscious, bias unconscious or conscious um, will impact your brand. And the way to get ahead of this is to be aware or at least make an educated guess, if you will, of what your audience wants to, uh, what your audience would find valuable. So your personal brand really is how you see yourself, how others perceive you, and what you say and do. And so it's really that sort of, you can bring the Venn diagram together, it's the, that confluence of the three circles is what actually becomes your brand. Have I intimidated you enough or about your brand? No, it's uh, what I'm trying to do really is not intimidate is to sort of break apart the pieces um, that go into forming your brand. But I'm also going to pause and ask if you had any questions or comments. All good? Julie, you went off mute. Did you want to? No, this is all good. I think that how others perceive you is just such a, it's a, so duh, but it's so important. And, you know, as I'm building a brand myself, I, I, that was the first thing I did was I sent out a note to all my friends. I'm like, if you could think of one word about me, what is that word? And it does create a really interesting word cloud on how you, you know, is that what you want? Right. Like yeah. that's like, that is the st story. Is that the story I want to continue? Or yeah. is there a new chapter that I want to create a new dialogue, a new story? Absolutely, and that's such a good tactic, Julie. Julie is to is to is to sort of poll the people you interact with the most and who know you the best to find out how they perceive you. Because there's always this little blind spot, you know. And you know, um, again, overused term in many days, but we're not always. We're rarely the best judge of ourselves uh, because you know, in many times we have this view of who we want to be and we believe that that's what we're communicating, but then something gets lost in translation. Mm -hmm. um, and so you do want to know who you want to be or who you are. And then you want to check that with what I call trusted partners. And actually we get to, we sp speak a little bit about that um, towards the end, that sort of homework that I will give you. Um, Sandra sent in a question. Um, as far as personal brand, do older women need to build something into their brand to help combat age discrimination? And how would that work? Um, Sandra, that's such a great question. Um, and I think, yes, you know, so knowing that, um, you know, age discrimination is a real thing in the workplace um, is to think about the value. So one of the benefits of having experience in the field that you're in is the experience that you have in the field that you're in. Um, and I think, again, listening, listening to what your audience needs, it's, it's about combining that experience with um, either, you know, the agility that is traditionally ascribed to people who are um, newer into the workforce or, 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 you know, bring a sort of extra different mindset, if you will. You know, so those are the kind, kind of the things that come up when we're talking about age discrimination that, you know, you've been it for so long that you, you know, you, you, in the old ways, you may not adapt to the new technologies or the new ways of thinking. And the best way to, um, to counteract that is to think about and to have examples of your work to share that show how you are keeping ahead and in terms, you know, or how you're keeping current with what's happening. But your experience is your asset. Um, and I think focusing on, uh, because when you're telling your story, you own the narrative and you focus on the experience and the, you know, the, um, the attributes that you um, bring in addition to the experience can, can um, help offset some of that age discrimination. 
I, I can't promise that they'll go away completely because you know people are, are people. Uh, but again, the first step is being aware. And then again, going back to your unique strengths and looking at how you can highlight them. Does that answer you, help or in some form at least answer your question, Sandra? Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, it does. I was wondering, like, do, do you try to, like, <laughs> sometimes I'm tempted to kind of, like, design things that are very young looking or, you know, how far do you go with it to try to show that you can be current? Great question. Um, I think you, so the key, I think, is always play on your strengths, right? We, we, we can trip ourselves up um, if we're trying to um, explore areas that we may not be familiar with, if it's not um, for a big presentation. So say you're working on a presentation and, um, and this is the first time where you're trying to push yourself on to, you know, um, to showcase new, new ways of thinking or new design ideas and so on. I would say, look, evaluate the risk. The first time you want to try that out is not in a high risk, high visibility environment. You want to build that in and get your, get confident with what you're presenting or what you're building. Um, and so one way is to that you're constantly learning, right? So taking on that approach of having that growth mindset and saying, there's always something, how much ever experience I have in my field, there's always something to learn. Reverse mentoring is another great way to sort of stay connected. So you're offering your experience in exchange for the, you know, the a different perspective, um, you know, to somebody who's, you know, earlier in their career or is just starting out. Um, and so it allows you to have, you so know, in a more um, informal way, absorb and, and uh, inform your, um, your thinking and your approach than just something that's, you know, like I'm going to take something that I saw and I'm going to transplant it here because you can absorb these um, and you know, inform yourself from these experiences, whether it's through like reverse mentoring, um, attending um, conferences or workshops, um, or just having general conversations with, with different colleagues. And then use your experience to make that connection of this is how it translates into the work that you're doing. And I would say start small. So you can, you know, again, so you can build that into your, into your repertoire, if you will. Um, so that when that big presentation or that big client meeting comes up, um, you're more well versed and you it, and it feels like your um, second skin, if you will, it doesn't feel awkward. But the moment we sort of step away and feel like I know it all or I've been in my in this field for so long and I can't learn, that's kind of where we um, we put that ceiling on ourselves in many ways, if you will. Um, does that help? Um, well, I'm a returner, so I've been out of the workforce for quite a while as a mom. So mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm trying to build up a portfolio and trying to figure out what my brand will be. Great, and you know, so re-enter. Yeah, and I think um, so. As we go through these steps, you know, uh, feel free to take to, to take these, reflect, and then I'm happy to connect afterwards. As you you know, once you've had a chance to reflect, we could go one on one and maybe. Um, catch up and see um, if we can start refining that or, you know, other experiences or um, things that we can add in there. Perfect. Great question. Thank you. All right. So creating your personal brand, of course, big stuff, intimidating, very scary. Not really. Uh, but it is, like I said, it is about focusing on identifying your target audience, your authentic message, and, and talking about how you are an expert in your niche, right? And those I think are the key aspects um, as we go into this. So what are the steps um, to developing your personal brand? Now the slide is going to fill up. So don't let the final appearance of the slide, you know, again, um, sort of uh, intimidate you. We'll talk through each of these steps and we'll actually do some reflection exercises um, as you work through each of these. So the first one, is your first step is understand your why, which um, I will say if you haven't um, read Simon Sinek's, um, you know, your understanding your why is a great book. It really does help you sort of discuss. There you go. Start with why, Julie. Wonderful. Uh, I'm a Simon Sinek fan, and uh, I will say that that's a really good book to start thinking about why you're doing 
what you're doing. It's about that deeper connection, not just because of, you know, some sort of check in the box exercise. So let's start with why. Examine your top five core values. What do I mean when I say, so when I say values, what comes to your mind? What am I, what am I talking about when I say values? Things that are most important to you. Yeah, things that are absolutely most important to you. Things that you would not compromise, you know, with your back against the wall, these would still hold true. So what are the five things that really matter to you? Um, and so you can start by making a list. You can narrow it down, but say, write down 10 things that matter and then cross out the ones that just don't resonate with you. Does leadership matter? Does um, parenting matter? You know, is it about um, your appearance and, you know, or having fun or religion or faith? You know, think about all those things that matter because ultimately your values are what holds you and guide you when the going gets tough, right? As Nicole said, it's what's important to you. And when things go tough, these are what we fall back on, right? So examine your top five values, uncover your passions, what really drives you. Like for me, equity um, and inclusion in the workplace is huge for personally for myself, but also because I have a 15 year old daughter and I don't want her to face some of the challenges that I have faced in my career being a, being a woman, being a woman of color. And so, you know, so that sort of just really is one of the reasons why I do all of the hard work and I call it the hard work of investing in inclusion, diversity and equity. And, and then from those two big areas, start defining your purpose and goals. What, are you, what do you really want to accomplish? When, as you're putting that brand statement together, what do you want as the end result? Like even as you're thinking of a product band brand, that's what you're really aiming for, right? What's the end objective? If you've defined a good brand, what should be the outcome? Questions? Okay. Define what benefits you have to offer. And I say benefits because we are talking now about your audience. Remember, we talked about your um, unique skills and attributes, but we also talked about your audience. So when you're defining your brand, there has to be something that's in it for them, them being your audience, right? So define and understand your audience. Now you may have to modify a little bit of your brand depending on the audience that you may be pitching it to, but remember that your core, your values, your passions will always stay true, right? So that authentic piece that we were talking about. So define and understand your audience. List your top five strengths and talents. Now, this can be especially hard because, um, you know, we tend to not be the best judge of what our talents are, or we may underplay what our strengths and talents are. And this is a great place where your trusted partners can come in to actually ask them what they think your strengths and talents are. So can I add one thing to that? Because yeah. to take that exercise a step further, I had heard this on a podcast and I thought it was really fantastic to go to those people, the, whoever they are in your life and, and at different varying points. So perhaps like, you know, you could go to family, people you've worked with, friends and ask them to describe a time when they saw you at your best. So they have yeah. to come back with some sort of story and, it, and, and ultimately you start connecting the themes and the words that they start to use and are there, and it gives you a full picture of yourself, which I thought was just really fantastic. That's, that's wonderful, Elizabeth, absolutely. And you can actually start doing it as a word cloud, right? So it's visual, but yeah, ask yes. people and, and identify your themes. And so that will show you what your, um, you know, how you connect and what people are saying about you. Um, so that's great, thank you for that. Um, and then we talked about being unique. So identify your differentiator. Now here you really want to understand your competitive environment, right? It's like doing your market research. Um, so one is to know the audience, but also to understand the, the environment and the culture that the audience is operating in, right? And, so, and why you will be, um, and how you can be that differentiator, that unique person um, in that specific environment. So the one thing, skill, attribute, approach um, that makes you unique. And then identify your reason to believe. Right, so this is for us, this is for you. Why, should, why do you, why, you have to believe in your brand first and then you have to create proof for others to believe in your brand, right? 
And so identify your evidence of proof, right? So should, does your brand reflect in your resume, how you present yourself, um, you know, your profile picture on LinkedIn, um, you know, what decision, how your career, how you've shaped your career, the decisions you've made, where you've, where you, where you've offered time, where you volunteer, all of these are um, examples or proofs of um, your differentiator and how you've leveraged your skills attributes. It's also a great way to be out in front of people and marketing your brand at the same time, sort of testing it out, if you will. Uh, and then make sure that you also have examples that support your being a differentiator. You know, I've worked in the tech industry for over 15 years. I've, you know, I'm very comfortable. Um, I, I understand soft, software technology speak, if you will. And with that, I bring an experience of being a professional and ex um, very experienced talent management professional. So I can combine those two, right? So, um, so you know, how do you, um, what examples can you collect as you become that differentiator? And then, only then, define what your brand statement is. It's about distilling all of these into one or two um, statements that really to look at who you are. So like I said, I can't, um, you know, we'll only get started. These are all like different steps and a lot of that is self-discovery. Um, so it's looking introspectively, but also, um, you know, as we, this is the example that we shared, asking your, the group of people that you trust, your peeps, you know, and getting, um, and polling people, if you will, to, to understand um, how you are perceived. Question. What we'll do next is really our, um, our exercise, right? In terms of looking at what the process is, but I know we've got about 10 minutes. So we're gonna use some of that time to actually look at uh, at least step one um, and parts of step two as well. I can't help you with the audience because that's really unique to you, but we'll talk about a little bit of step one and step two um, as well. Okay, so just in summary, Reflection, talk about values, purposes, strengths, differentiators, create evidence, build your brand statement, get validation, friends, family, colleagues, members of your target audience, and then put it in action. So make sure that as you put this brand statement together, that it is reflective in your resume, how you, <coughs> excuse me, how you present yourself in person, online, um, what projects you take, and how you interact with social media. Okay, so let's get into our first part of the exercise. So if you can grab a pen on paper or online, whatever works for you, but I'm gonna ask you to take a few notes. I want you to think and record answers to the following questions, right? The first question is think about your all time favorite pet or your best friend, in case you're not, a, you, know, you don't have pets, whether it's now or later, and write down three to five qualities that you most loved about this person or this pet. All right, so give me a thumbs up when you're done. Okay. <clears throat> All right, since so, so I can only see Julie, um, I'm just gonna assume that that's, we'll move forward, also in the interests of time. Thank you for the thumbs up, Jennifer. Second question, recall your favorite hero or heroine, fictional or real, doesn't matter. And in your mind, ask them the following questions and you know, write down the responses. What do you stand for? What are you here to contribute? And what are you passionate about?
thank you for joining us, Tamara. And even if you're still thinking about question number two, I'm going to bring up the other question. Um, think about the last two or three times someone said to you, I wish I could do that so easily or as effortlessly as you seem to do it. Think about, you know, the times you've heard this, what are they talking about? And then also think about a couple of things that just light you up, that energize you things that uh, make you feel, oh, this is good. I could do this forever. And then when you're done, put a thumbs up. Okay, all right, thank you, Nicole. All right, so here's what we just did. And I know it doesn't feel like we did it that way, but that first question is really about core values, right? So as you, you know, think of these as a reflection, what you were drawn to your pet or your best friend for something that resonated with you as well, right? Again, this is just very initial, uh, just to get us started on the journey. Um, so the first question is a reflection on some of the things that you um, that may be important to you, you know, from a value that, that form your values. The second question is about purpose, right? So again, you tend to reflect or look up to people that you want to emulate, and that's a, that's a way to sort of make a connection to what you feel your purpose is, right? We were talking about purpose and goals, what you stand for, what are you here to contribute, and what are you passionate about. So that's a, that's a way to explore what your purpose uh, could be or maybe, or at least you know, kind of what, what um, calls to you, if you will. Um, the last question is about strengths and talents. And as, even as like Elizabeth mentioned, you know, you, this is what people tell you you do well. This, and, and this is also what gives you energy, what lights you up, which you don't feel tired doing, which you look forward to doing. So those are your strengths and talents. So, you know, again, these, this, these are questions to get you to write some of these down, but more, more of this is about exploring and sort of going down, um, you know, a little more in depth for each of these, um, these aspects. And I promise you homework. So here's your homework, right? So part two of this exercise um, is to begin to create your personal brand, right? First was the, the more of the reflection piece. So you'll have to do a little bit more of reflection, of course. Um, but share your values, purpose, and natural strengths with a few trusted partners, right? So check out friends, colleagues you trust, um, stakeholders, partners, you know, that you people, you peers that you trust um, and get their, get their thoughts. And then solicit advice on, um, you know, do these resonate? Can they confirm? Do they see these, you living those values? Can they identify uh, that purpose with you? Does it seem at odds or was it like, oh yeah, that's totally you. And same thing with your strengths. Do they resonate? What didn't resonate? Explore that. Now this could be that blind spot where we felt that we, this was important to us, but it's not something that we're, be, you know, we, that we're seeing. So understand why. What's, what's giving mixed messages or not communicating what you wanted to communicate? Then think about how you would modify them. What would that look like? And then, um, and then start looking at, well, what would you do to distill these into your brand statement? I know this is a lot, and I sort of feel like I've rushed you through it. I'm gonna pause here for just a bit and ask, um, how are you feeling about this? Does it seem intimidating? Do you wanna spend some more time mulling over it? I think it's a lot to think about, but the way that you put it out, you can take it in, you know, in sections and, and go at your own pace as well. So I, I appreciate the steps and the sub steps involved to, to be able to, to, it's not like you have to do it all at once. 
Right. Yes. And thank you. That's, that's Julie. That's so right. You know, like if you take the whole concept right at the beginning, it seems intimidating or just too much. But if you just look at these, it's like you can just do your values for now and you can leave purpose for another time as long as you, you know, sort of come back to it. But yes, you just take it one step at a time. And so here's what we um, talked about. We talked about that you already have a personal brand, but the thing is to ask yourself, is that the one you want to be? Uh, your brand is the intersection of how you view yourselves and how others perceive you and your behavior. Now remember behavior as, as actions translated, as feelings and thoughts translated into action. Bias, whether it's conscious or unconscious, impacts your brand. So you have to understand your audience and the environment and the culture that you are operating in. And then uh, it's an ongoing process, right? So even now after you know you do go through parts one and you spend more time on part two, you'll have and you distill your brand statement. Our goals may change, our purpose may change, you know, as we go through life and experiences. Um, so this is something that I would say is not one it's once and done. Uh, you want to keep revisiting your brand, even if it is to check, even if it hasn't changed, to confirm that it hasn't and it still resonates. And it's still something that you're, um, that you know, moves and motivates your audience. So that's kind of what we, you know, covered. We covered a lot, but you know, in, in essence. And remember, authenticity and consistency are essential. So you know, your brand is reflected not just by the statement that you say, but it's also reflective in um, how you present yourself, your choice of words, how you how you present yourself on social media what you choose to engage and spend your time in. Um, and that if you can do these authentically, well, you know, staying true to your core and then consistently, that just gives you the proof that you need to sort of show your audience that you are living true to your brand. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna just tell you a couple of things to think about. Reflect on today's session. I know we, took, we covered a lot in this huge topic. Um, just for yourselves, write down at least three things that you took away from the session. Identify your trusted partners for part two of the exercise and start reaching out to them. And then identify at least one action that you will take to continue working on your personal brand. So that's, you know, sort of we're not just leaving it here now in this one hour that we spent together, but you're taking something away and, and committing to, to working on crafting your brand. And that's really all I have for you um, today. Uh, I'm sure we'll share the slides, if not, but you know, if you look at the back of the slides, there are some personal brand sta sample statements. Again, these are as examples. You don't have to copy or emulate, or you know, um, they don't have to read like that. Each of these are different, uh, but these are examples if you need inspiration. Uh, check out the uh, website called personalbrand.com that has a really a lot of good information. Um, and there's some additional resources um, that you can look at, you know, there's the PwC's personal workbook, there's a personal branding quiz you can take, um, there's a book you can read, again, depending on what motivates you and how you learn, there's a host of uh, resources that you can use to continue this journey, continue that reflection piece um, that we were talking about. And that is all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonali. This was such a great session, great information. Um, really loved how engaging it was as well. So I am I'm eager, I hope everyone else is, to continue on their personal branding path and those resources were great. So thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was great to meet everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Yeah.